Morphin Time! Yeah, Power Rangers has been out for a few days now. I've got to see it a couple times, and now I want to talk about some spoilers in the movie. So yeah, official spoiler warning. If you haven't seen Power Rangers, go watch it. It's a pretty cool movie. And then you can come back here and watch this video. Oh, and if you haven't seen the movie, also don't go on Facebook or Twitter. Power Rangers account. I, uh, we'll get to that later. So this movie opens up and it's actually a flashback to way earlier. You find out that Brian Cranston's Zordon was actually the original Red Ranger and Rita was actually the original Green Ranger. And now they told us this before the movie started, like Lionsgate and the Power Rangers were saying this is a thing. And in my head, I was always like, why would you tell us that? That sounds like a spoiler for the movie. But no, apparently not because it's the first scene of the movie. But anyways, Rita goes rogue. She's trying to collect the Zeo crystal so that she can rule the earth. Zordon's team is trying to defend it, but ultimately his team gets wiped out and he dies and he orders Alpha to strike the earth with a comet is the same comet that killed the dinosaurs and right before that he hides the power rings and he's like all right you guys are gonna seek out the true next rangers find people that are worthy of the power rangers name and then we flash forward to modern day angel grove and you meet jason and he's pulling a prank where he's putting like a giant bowl in some other team's locker room and yeah that first joke when his friend is like oh i milked the cow and he's like it's a bull it's, it's a male. And then his friend shines the flashlight on the little bull penis, and I was like, okay, it's a Transformers joke. Part of me is kind of like, yeah, they're in high school, and that's kind of how high schoolers are. Granted, I don't know a high schooler that's that stupid. I will say, it feels better for a high schooler to say that joke than it does for John Turturro to say that joke. But the plan goes awry, and Jason lands in this car crash where he rams into the front of a car and then somehow flips. I... Don't get the physics of that. But now he's being monitored. He's got a little ankle brace and he has to spend every Saturday in detention at Angel Grove High School. And it's at this point where we're starting to get introduced to the full cast of the Power Rangers. And I really liked how Jason and Billy, first of all, I like the fact that Billy has autism. It's not like a severe case or anything. I was just thinking, I like how in the TV show, Billy was really nerdy and he was really smart. And that's why he didn't really connect with a lot of people. He was like, yeah, affirmative alpha. But in this movie, Billy is still smart, yet he can't really connect with people because, you know, his brain works a little bit differently. He can't pick up on people's jokes. But this scene when that character top bully went up to Billy and he was like cracking his pencils. Jason goes up and he just slaps him in the face. There was something really gratifying about that slap. The bully was just like, did you slap me? And Jason's like, yeah, I did. And you can tell that really just spoke to Billy because it was the first time Billy in his life felt like he had a friend. Well, the first time in years anyways, probably the first time since his dad died. And then Billy and Jason, they go to this gold mine where they see Kimberly and Zach and Trini and they go and Billy causes a big explosion that reveals the power coins, which kind of leads to some of my more nitpicky stuff about the movie. Watching the movie the second time, it did kind of make me realize a couple things where I'm like, they didn't really think that through all the way or I don't see how A and B ended up at C. One of those things is when they're leaving the gold mine and they're escaping in Billy's van. They do like the Fast and Furious thing where they're like, oh, we can make it, we can make it, we can make it. When this train's coming at them and I'm bravo for the movie because I thought they were going to make it. But no, they're like, yeah, we're gonna make it. And they get in a big car crash but then because they have the power coins, they survive, they end up back at home and they're all like, I'm super strong now. What's happening to me? I don't remember getting home last night. And that's all well and good but they don't actually explain how they got back home. I mean, I guess you could say the power coins like transported them back to their houses. In the TV show, the little morphers gave them the ability to transport. I even would have been fine if Alpha was just like, oh yeah, we found you guys out on the road, so we took you all home. But there's no real explanation to that. And then the next day when they're driving back to the gold mine, you see a crew uncovering the van and the tow truck and all that, and but they just kind of forget about it. Does Billy's mom not realize that she's out a car? Did the police not run the plates on the van? It's really not important to the plot, but still, it was just kind of weird that that was never brought up again. And then they go to the command center, they meet Alpha and Zordon, and Zordon's given the whole load on on like, yeah, Rita, and she's after the Zeo crystal. You guys need to become the Power Rangers and stop her. And then they're all like, how much time do we have? And Alpha goes, 11 days. 11 days sounds pretty precise. At this point, they don't even know that Rita is alive unless somehow Rita and Zordon's brains are like linked. You know, like Harry Potter and Voldemort or that kind of thing. At this point in the movie, we do know that Jason's dad has uncovered Rita from the bottom of the ocean. But how does Alpha know that Rita, who's laid dormant for the last 65 million years, right after these kids find the coins, he's exactly like, oh yeah, it's 11 days from now, world's gonna end. Did Zordon set up like a timer for this thing? Why couldn't he have set a timer for longer if that was the case. That was another one of those scenes where I was kind of like, not everything in this movie adds up. However, one of my favorite parts about Power Rangers was the characters. You know in the original TV show's opening when Zordon's like, Alpha, we just escaped. Recruits of teenagers with attitude. And then Alpha recruits, you know, the star pupils, the star karate students. In this movie, the kids had attitude. And I really liked a lot of the character development they did with these kids. The kids do some stupid stuff, like Zack when he took his Zord out for a joyride, and Jason at the beginning when he was doing his prank. But they never crossed the line of being unlikable. I was still rooting for these guys the entire time. Even Zack, when Jason's yelling at him, he's like, you could have killed us. I saw what Jason was saying, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, Zack, you know, he's a teenager. He's gonna do this stupid stuff. It just made the kids feel more real than they did in the TV 
TV show. Like, the kids in the TV show wouldn't have taken these Zords out for joyrides at all, but the ones in the movie, they're like, yeah, we're kids, we're reckless, why not, let's do it. And throughout this whole thing, Rita is out there, and she's collecting gold for gold art, and the first, like, two scenes with Rita, like, when she's fished out of the ocean, and then when Zordon gives the Rangers that vision of Rita ending the world, I was actually kind of into it. Jason walks out of his house, and Rita's, like, sucking his life force out, and she's just making them all look like Bav Morda from Willow. I was a little creeped out by that, I was like, ooh, Rita's actually kind of menacing. But then when she starts talking, she walks into the jewelry store, and she's like, gold. Give me gold to resurrect my Goldar. At the end when she like fused into Goldar and she was screaming, I half expected her to go, I love gold. It didn't happen, but I wouldn't have been surprised if it did. But then we get back to the characters and they're doing that campfire scene. And that's when you get a lot of the backstory of a lot of the characters. I really felt for all their stories. And this was one of those scenes that made me kind of tear up a little bit. I was like, wow, emotion in a Power Rangers movie. Especially from Zack. When Zack is talking about, yeah, I live at the trailer park. I live with my mom and my mom is awesome. Then he kind of quiets down, which is unusual for Zack. But he's like, my mom's sick and when she goes I'm, I'm not gonna have anybody else same thing with Trini she was like my parents don't understand me I move every single year I feel really alone and then later when Kimberly is talking to Jason now with Kimberly's story it could have easily made this like a very first world problems type of thing like oh yeah people think I'm ugly and that's why I'm here which yeah Naomi Scott ugly I, just, I don't get that and even the story itself you know she leaked nudes to her friend's boyfriend and you know sent a really shaming text that kind of sounds like something you would see in like mean girls and I was like okay I sure whatever but I like how they went further with with it and she really realized the error of her way she was like I had to sit there in the principal's office as he showed this girl's father the picture that I sent and the look of horror on his face made me realize what a terrible person I am and I felt really bad for Kimberly because you we've all been in that situation where you do something you really think nothing of it but then down the road you start to see the effect that that decision had on other people and it makes you kind of pull back and you're like what what was I thinking? And then Jason basically tells her, like, you're gonna make these mistakes, you, you gotta learn to live with them. And all throughout this movie, you know, we saw in the trailer there was a scene with Kimberly and Jason and they were kissing. At no point in this movie did I really feel like they had anything, and I'm really glad that they cut that out of the movie. Even at the end when they're getting pushed into the lava pit and Kimberly puts her hand up to the, the window of her pterodactyl and Jason looks at her, I still felt like that was more of a friendship thing. To me, it honestly felt like Zack and Trini had more of a romantic connection in this movie than Kimberly and Jason did. So I like how they didn't have to force a love story into this movie just because it's like, you know, a young adult type of movie. This is Lionsgate after all. I'm glad they didn't feel the need to force in a romantic subplot. And because those characters are so good, you know, you get to the moment in the movie when Rita finds out where the Zeo crystal is, and yeah, it's, it's underneath a Krispy Kreme, which is stupid, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But then she kills Billy. Like, she actually legit kills Billy. Billy is dead. And of course, you know that Billy's gonna come back to life, but what a good movie is able to do is for a second, it makes you forget that fact. And for me, I forgot the fact that Billy was gonna come back. Like, I figured, you know, Billy's gonna be back. But when they're in the command center and Jason's like Zordon you, you have to help us and they're all saying like I would give my life for you Billy I'd give my life for anybody on this team that was another scene I started tearing up and I was like oh my gosh they're a team and the arc with Zordon too that was really great at first Zordon is kind of a jerk Zordon essentially wants these kids to access the morphing grid so that he can resurrect himself and he can go fight Rita and Jason calls him out on it he's like you're just using us so that you can resurrect yourself and Zordon doesn't hide that fact he's like yeah I don't trust you guys you guys aren't ready to become the Power Rangers you guys are weak you guys can't stop Rita but in that scene when the kids are talking about, you know, I would die for you, I would die for you. I feel like Zordon. That was the moment when Zordon was like, all right, my team is dead, I failed. It's time to fully pass the torch on to this new generation. And because they now feel like a team, they've accessed the morphing grid and Zordon is able to resurrect Billy instead of saving himself. It was just such a sigh of relief seeing Billy come back and it was a cool conclusion to Zordon's story arc. Again, I just wasn't really expecting Zordon to have an arc in this movie and he did and they didn't have to do that, but they did and I thought it was cool. See, what I like about this movie is that with all the character development that they do, when you get to the Power Ranger-y stuff at the end of the movie, like when Jason stands up on that portal and he says, it's morphin' time. That scene felt earned. I felt at that point the Power Rangers are a team. You know, you look at a movie like Suicide Squad and El Diablo's like, I already lost one family, I'm not gonna lose another. And you're just like, you guys met, what, like this morning and you guys are a family? Really? And this movie takes place over the course of like 11 days, maybe even a little less, and I felt like these kids are now a family, they're a team. So when they get up in their Power Ranger suits and they're just kicking the crap out of all those putties on the cliff, I was like, yeah, they are a team, they've earned this, this is awesome. Awesome. Then they all hop on their Zords and they're tromping into the town with the awesome Power Rangers theme song playing, which I'm so glad they had in this movie. I would have liked the song to be in the movie for a little bit longer. Maybe, like, instead of them playing Kanye when they're wiping out the putties, just keep the theme song.
I'm going. Why not? But when they're going to the town and they're talking about Rita's plan, I swear, like every other line that is said has the words crispy and cream somewhere in that sentence. It's actually hilarious at a point. They're like, Rita hasn't found the Krispy Kreme yet. Okay, what should we do? All right, you guys circle around the Krispy Kreme. We're not gonna be able to get to the Krispy Kreme in time. And it's like every other line that mentioned Krispy Kreme. There's a scene when Rita is just sitting in the Krispy Kreme and she takes this really like slow commercial style bite out of a donut. I get it, product placement. And I know Krispy Kreme probably paid a lot to be in this movie, but couldn't they have just made it like Ernie's juice bar from the TV show? You know, the little rec center they all hung out at? Then you can see those bullies that were bossing Kimberly around. You can see the little ginger bully from detention, maybe even put Bulk and Skull in there. And you can see Ernie. Ernie was a cool character. I feel like that's just an easy way to do a little throwback to Power Rangers without having to put in all this product placement. But businesses and studios, and I get why they did it. However, as goofy as that was, it didn't detract from the finale for me. I thought the finale in this movie was really cool. It's got some cheesy moments in it for sure, but overall, I was pretty happy with it. The part that doesn't really make a lot of sense for me is when Goldar is pushing them into the pit that the Zeo Crystal's in, and they're all like, hold the line, hold the line. And that was a cool scene, and I enjoyed that, and the fact that they were like, we're not gonna get out of this. But they're all like, yeah, we're gonna die together. I felt, again, you know, they're a very strong team. And then they all fall into the pit and they come back out as the Megazord. Again, one of those things in the movie that's not really explained at all. They don't really explain how these kids knew they could form into a Megazord, but they form into the Megazord. But I did like the design of the Megazord, and I also like the fact that the Power Rangers, they're not just in one giant cockpit at the top of the Megazord. That's something that always bugged me about the TV show. Is they're all in these separate Zords, they're all commanding their different Zords, but then when they form into the Megazord, they all end up in the same cockpit. Pit. And I'm just like, but how? Are there like little shoots or slides where they're able to get from their own cockpits into the Megazord cockpit? But in this movie, they have, yo, know, Jason's in the center and Kimberly and Trini are doing the arms, Zach and Billy are doing the legs. And I liked how they were all in their own separate areas and they had to work together and communicate in order to work the Megazord. That was really cool. I really like what they did with the Megazord. They have a sweet fight with Goldar and then Jason tells Rita, he's like, if you come with us, we can bring you to justice. Let Zordon decide what to do with you. And Rita's all like, never! And she like jumps up. And then the Megazord totally just slaps Rita into space and she ends up like Zod in the Phantom Zone at the beginning of Superman 1. I saw that and I was like, <laughs> I guess this is a Power Rangers movie, isn't it? Again, cheesy scene, but it's Power Rangers. But then they save the day and the crowd's all cheering for them and Jason David Frank and Amy Jo Johnson have a little cameo. Yeah, did you guys see that at the end of the movie, Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank? They were two of the citizens that were taking little like cell phone videos of the Power Rangers. And then we get a little monologue from Zordon he's basically saying, yeah, the Power Rangers, they're a team. And then the movie ends and I was like, yeah, Awesome Power Rangers movie, but there's probably something at the end. Sure enough, in the middle of the credits, they have a detention scene, and the guy doing detention, he's like, all right, new student, Tommy Oliver? Tommy Oliver? Tommy Oliver? And you see an empty desk with a green jacket, and you're like, oh, Green Ranger! But, uh, uh, dude. Okay, I'm sure, like... 80 to 90 percent of the people that were going into this movie myself included we all assumed that the post credit scene was going to tease tommy oliver but like the day before i saw this movie the official the official power rangers page posted this little gif of a green ranger helmet in the style of the ones from the movie and at first i wasn't really thinking about it at first i was like yeah green ranger cool and then i was like wait a minute that's, that's a freaking spoiler. But they did say before, yeah, Rita's a Green Ranger. But when you see a Green Ranger helmet, you don't think Rita Repulsa. You think Tommy Oliver. So why did the official Power Rangers Facebook and Twitter pages post this gif before the movie was officially released? It just angered me so much. I was like, why would you spoil that? Again, like I said, I'm sure 90% of the people going into this movie could have assessed that Tommy Oliver was going to be in the post credit scene. But still, it's just, ugh, just marketing and studios makes me angry sometimes. Overall, I really enjoyed this Power Rangers movie. There's a lot of stuff in it I liked. A couple things I didn't like. But I thought this was a sweet start to a new Power Rangers franchise. Please go see this movie. I want this movie to do well enough to warrant a sequel because in the sequel, we get the Green Ranger saga and then I want the third movie, Lord Zed. It would be so cool. You'll imagine it. In the second movie, Rita comes back and she manipulates Tommy and Tommy is a rival to Jason. They could do the whole Green with Evil story arc. The Rangers are like, who is this guy? They find out he's one of their own, one of their fellow Angel Grove high school students. And then at the end of the day, the the Rangers are able to beat him, they best Rita once again, and then in the third movie, or you know, post credit scene for the second movie, of course, Rita's like on the ground crawling, or she's just chilling because she lost her battle, and you just hear this voice from behind her go, it's time for a change in command. And then boom, Lord Zed for Power Rangers 3. Wouldn't that be cool? I, I, I want that so bad. So Power Rangers was an awesome movie. Honestly, Rotten Tomatoes, I don't get that. Okay, I get how Rotten Tomatoes works and I get this movie isn't for everybody. If you're not a fan of the Power Rangers, I could see you not liking this movie. But what is it, like a 45, 47% on Rotten Tomatoes? I think this is a fresh movie. Whether that is barely fresh or even a little bit higher. But now Power Rangers, anything and everything you want to talk about, spoilers, non-spoilers, let me know down in the comments what were some of your favorite parts of the movie. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys liked it, you can click subscribe and check out some of my other videos and I'll catch you guys next time.